So let's see how to use condition technique. What let first of all let's try to understand what is condition technique. Um, what are the applications in which we use condition technique? How to use condition technique? Okay. So as the name condition technique, it's a generic word. It can be applied um, to many of the SAP applications, not only in MM but in um, MMSD, even in um, accounting as well. Okay, so in um, MM, we use it for price determination procedure, message determination procedure, and of course, even batch determination procedure. So, how pricing is controlled in SAP? So, let's try to understand this one. Pricing as the term used in SAP describes the calculation of various prices and costs. When, let's say when you create a purchase order, you will have various pricing elements like gross price, discount, surcharge, you know, freight, taxes, so on and so forth. So together as you know, what are the pricing elements to be defaulted automatically into the purchase order is what we call it as pricing procedure in SAP MM purchasing. So that's what we are going to discuss it. So the pricing in SAP is actually controlled by a term called condition technique, a concept called condition technique. So, so by um, once we complete the, the price definition procedure, you would understand how it will be controlled. Like I said, the condition technique is not only used in SAP MM, but it's used in multiple places. Let me put it here. Condition technique. So this we use it for pricing. We use it for message or output determination. Okay, and we use it for also called batch determination. Okay, we use it for partner determination. Okay, all these five, four, we use it in SAP MM. Okay, so these are all from part of SAP MM. So we have already discussed about partner definition when we work with vendor master. And we will see today price definition, message definition tomorrow, batch definition in case of batch management. Apart from this, you could see here it's also used at multiple places in sales order processing, like when you purchase metal from vendor you will have various prices or pricing elements negotiated by your buyer. Similarly, when you sell the product of yours to customer, you will also have gross price, discount, surcharge, net price, so on and so forth. This is from the sales order perspective. So therefore, the condition technique is also being used in sales order processing. It's being used in invoice processing, purchasing, which we are discussing right now. Stock transport order with SD delivery and billing. This is part of STPO, stock transport order with SD delivery and billing. That is across company codes, which we will see it in um, special procurement. It's also being used in tax calculation. It's also used in costing sheets for orders or internal orders. In other applications, it's used in revenue account determination, text determination, output and partner determination, again part of SAP MM. In case of um, what you call the workflow where there is something called um, um, work item ID. Okay, it's used in that place and also in batch determination. So in all other places where uh, the same concept is used, but you would probably see slightly different terminology. Okay, now to work with pricing or to work with part, uh, what you call the condition technique, you need to know these terms. Terms to be known. Okay. The first and foremost thing, what we call it as, let's say, pricing procedure. In case of pricing, we call it as pricing procedure, or the generic name is something called calculation scheme. Okay. So you need to understand what we call it as calculation schema. We have something called schema group for vendor. Okay. So you have also 
one more thing called schema group for purchasing organization okay then you have something called condition type okay so you have condition table you have something called condition record okay you have something called access sequence key you have one more thing called sequence key okay what else <laughs> Are these the only things? Seven items. Sorry? Seven, seven. Yeah, seven items. Seven items. Right? So, so the, okay, there is one more thing which I have forgotten. There is something called exclusion indicator. Okay? So these are the ones which you need to remember or which you need to understand as part of um, condition technique. So let me explain you each and everything and then I'll go with configuration and then configure. Pricing procedure or calculation schema. Okay. This contains, right. So it contains list of valid condition types okay condition type okay um, list of valid condition types for a I would say specific vendor and purchase organization right so this is what we call it as calculation schema or what we call it as a pricing procedure and what is Schema group for vendor. Schema group for vendor is nothing but a key assigned to the vendor, okay, which is used to determine the correct, I would say, correct calculation schema. In a way, you call it as pricing procedure for a specific vendor. I would say for a specific vendor. Okay. So it's a key that is assigned to a vendor which is used to determine the correct calculation schema or a pricing procedure for a specific vendor. Now what is the schema group for purchasing organization? Okay. This is also a key, okay, this is also a key assigned to a purchase organization which is used to determine the correct calculation scheme or pricing procedure, okay, pricing procedure if the items are procured. by a specific purchasing organization okay then let's try to understand what is condition type a condition type is nothing but the type of the various types of condition types are nothing but the type of pricing element used okay like cross price it's one condition type discount is another condition type surcharge is one more condition type so it's nothing but a form of a pricing element used in pricing procedure i would say a form of pricing element example gross price discount okay tax net price etc Okay, used in the pricing procedure. Okay, so this is called condition type. 
So what do you mean by condition table? Okay, so let's try to understand what is a condition table. Let's say, let me take one example as gross price. When I say gross price, that is the price of an item, you can get the gross price based on multiple things. Gross price or rather the price you can derive it from info record or if you are referring a line item in a purchase order for a, from a particular contract that means you can get the item price from a contract okay in case if you are working with service orders the price could be independent of plant and you know anything or you can have something like a plant specific price so it means you will have the price gross price which can be derived from multiple options the condition table is nothing but combination of key fields used to derive a certain condition type or a certain condition type like I said price based on purchasing organization and plan price based on only purchasing organization and a specific vendor isn't it so therefore you could have multiple table fields which can be used to derive a price a gross price if, right so it means each condition type can have multiple condition tables right so your price may be defaulted from any other condition table. So if I have to say a condition type is nothing but a uh, it's a table made up of made up of combination of key fields used to bring life the condition okay I would say pricing element okay so you can have multiple condition tables for a particular condition type okay therefore you can have multiple condition tables for a specific I would say condition type that's possible right now what is condition record a condition record is nothing but an actual value for a particular condition type Okay, for example, if I say gross price of 10 rupees, the 10 rupees INR is nothing but the condition record. Okay, so one sec. An actual value for a particular condition type is nothing but condition record. Then access sequence key. Let me define the access sequence key. The entire condition. Hello sir, condition table oh, sir. Uh, therefore you can, can have multiple condition I can convert less sir. It is low button only. Let's see. Justify Jane sir. Okay. It automatically lost an animal. If I have to do this, it will be there for each and every thing. Okay, so access sequence key, let me explain you what is access sequence key. It's a search strategy given by SAP which is used to determine the correct condition record available for a particular condition type. 
okay hmm ఇట్లా తీసుకోవట్లేదండి కంట్రోల్ చేయండి ఐ విల్ ఐ విల్ డూ దిస్ లేటర్ అండి బేసికలీ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు యూస్ టూ సెల్స్ ఇఫ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు డూ దట్ వే సో బికాస్ ఐ హ్ యూస్ సింగిల్ సెల్ ఇఫ్ ఐ గో విత్ ఫార్మాట్ ఇట్ విల్ బి అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ ఓన్లీ వన్ సెల్ ఓకే సో నా యాక్సెస్ సీక్వెన్స్ కి యాజ్ ఐ సెడ్ ఇట్స్ అ సెర్చ్ స్ట్రాటజీ గివెన్ బై ఎస్ఏపి ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు డిటర్మైన్ a correct condition record available for a particular condition type okay so if, if, if you understand this particular sentence the, the entire condition technique will be much much easier for you so let me repeat once again okay it's a search strategy defined by sab which is used to determine the correct condition record correct condition record available from a multiple available from multiple i would say condition tables for a particular condition type okay it's a search strategy defined by sap which is used to determine the correct condition record available from multiple condition tables for a particular condition type okay sequence key exclusion indicator we will discuss it when we actually go into condition table right so with this let me take you to the configuration i will explain you first over here and then i'll go with um i'll go with the um the the actual um what i would say um the configurations you see here let's say this is my po okay let me just put it as say Just give me a moment. Let's say PO number. Say let's open one PO. Just for the sake of example. Oops. say ME23N assume it is this my PO or not? this is not my PO so let me take one of the POs that I have created ok so this is my PO I'll just use this PO ok over here you see this is my PO you see here what information am I giving primarily here I'm giving vendor information ok so you say here you have got some vendor information okay so you have a vendor information maintained here and you have a purchasing organization information you can maintain here isn't it so you have a purchasing organization information you can maintain it so here let's say this is my vendor information so and then the purchasing organization information is for example 77c here okay look at here this is my purchasing organization 
what does it mean you see here in my terms to be used I specified schema group for vendor schema group for purchase organization in my purchase order if I give vendor information and purchase organization information my system is going to determine there is something called schema group for vendor and my system is also going to determine schema group for purchasing organization okay so here schema group for vendor if I if, if my system knows the vendor information it's going to find out schema group for vendor okay so it's going to find out the schema group for vendor information is available to the system similarly if it knows the purchasing organization if my system knows purchasing organization obviously it's going to find out the schema group for purchasing organization even this is also available for my system what am I going to do for these two schema groups I'm going to assign something called calculation schema okay for these two I'm going to assign there is something called calculation schema all right say I'm going to assign my calculation schema or I would say the pricing procedure okay so here is my calculation schema I would say calculation schema I'm going to assign something called calculation schema this calculation schema is the one which contains all the pricing elements that are going to be used in my purchase order so so here I'm going to specify what are my conditions or the pricing conditions or purchasing things that I'm going to use to start with okay you could see here I'll just go and specify few things over here okay so here I'm going to enter the, the gross price okay for example what else I'm going to use discount okay I'm going to use surcharge okay let's say I wanted to write also okay and then um, what else would you like to use for example let's say net price okay assume it these are the ones which I'm going to use in my purchase order or rather these are the ones which I'm going to negotiate okay so these are the ones I'm going to negotiate with my vendor okay so let's say if I am the buyer right so if I am the buyer, I am going to negotiate the following conditions with my vendor. So can we add inco terms also? Is inco term a condition, pricing condition? Can you can you tell me that is inco term a pricing condition? It's not, isn't it? Input term is not a pricing condition. Based on the input terms you define. Based on the input term, the rest of the conditions will be you will Different. be defining it. So therefore input term is not a pricing condition. Right? Okay. So here okay. you see here, this is the triggering point. The question will be asked in this way. What is the triggering point for the pricing procedure? 
you have to say based on the vendor master on the purchase organization that you give in your purchase order system determines schema group for vendor and the corresponding schema group for the purchasing organization with this combination I am going to maintain a calculation schema in configurations which actually contains list of pricing conditions that I am going to use it okay so for each of these one you will have various keys so now Give me a moment. Okay. So let me copy this. Or maybe I can copy it later. With this, let me take you to configurations. So I'll just go with slash o s p r o. This is a navigation bar. You have to go to configurations. Wherein you go with the MM purchasing. Under MM purchasing, you would see something called conditions. We are not able to hear your voice, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, whenever. Welcome to GoToMeeting online meeting. There are five other callers on the call. Thank you. 